So as you guys can read by the title, we do in fact have an update on Wander Franco and I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. It does not sound good at all. We also have an update on a trade that just happened between the Guardians and the Yankees. No, it's not the biggest trade I've ever seen, but as a Guardians fan, I'm very interested. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. And also an update on Mitch Garver. He absolutely rakes and he just won a World Series with the Rangers. Um, he just went to the division rival of the Rangers. So we're gonna talk about that as well. If you guys are brand new to the channel, we do this almost every single day. So do me a favor. Let's get that 500,000 subs. Click that subscribe button because it really helps me out. Obviously the first thing that we're gonna talk about in today's recap is the update on Wander Franco and I put that in air quotes because I don't exactly know what is going to come of this story so according to sources out there the Santo Domingo prosecutor's office for children and adolescents carried out not just one two home raids in search of Wander Franco and he was not found so obviously because the police are looking for him they cannot find Wander Franco everyone is just assuming that he's pulling an OJ Simpson he is evading police we do not know that right now because this is the same person that pulled up to his MLB debut at like 18 19 years old and a massive Rolls Royce looking car I can't remember what it was but this dude has had money before he was in the bigs he got a fat 11 year contract extension worth almost 200 million dollars I'm thinking they haven't been able to find Wander Franco in the two home raids because he probably has five six 20 houses or something like that so what do you guys make of this situation? Is Wander Franco on the move because he knows that the police are looking for him and the investigation seems to be coming to a close? Maybe they have all of their information or are you on the side of, hey, Wander Franco, he's a young kid. He's got a ton of money. He burns his money. Maybe he has a bunch of different homes. That's the update. It's not really an update per se in terms of if he's going to be playing in 2024 or not. But if you are an investor of Wander Franco cards, you basically are looking at your cards as burnt money. It's lighting on fire right before your very own eyes. Now, obviously, I do have to be careful with my words because I am not trying to get sued into oblivion. Usually, I can just speak freely, but because this is an ongoing investigation, the allegations and the rumors are absolutely wild, and if they are in fact true. Wander Franco is never going to play a game of Major League Baseball ever again and I feel bad for Rays fans because they never spend any money. They never invest actual dollars into their franchise and the one time that they break the bank, they give a kid 200 million dollars he absolutely botches it and in the worst way possible. Then it reminds me of a guy that used to be a superstar closing pitcher, Felipe Vasquez. If you guys have no idea who that is, let me just save you some time. You don't have to do any research. He also was involved with some improper relationships and he was actually sent to prison. So that's the update on Wander Franco. The police or whatever the prosecutor's office for children and adolescents are actively looking for Wander Franco, whether that's to get more information, whether that's because their investigation is over and also MLB is carrying out their own investigation so the update is they're looking for him but that's the update we don't know anything else after that is he in trouble is he not we have no idea but you guys have to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below all right let's move on over to some lighter news mitch garver who rakes got paid and what's crazy about it is even though he got paid he got i think 12 million dollars a year for the next two years so a 24 million dollar contract from the mariners to me for a guy that has a career 123 ops plus he just put up 19 home runs and a 134 ops plus with a 370 on base percentage last year i feel like 12 million dollars is nothing for that now granted he will be 33 years old going into the 2024 season but the mariners they finally spent some money this has been kind of an off season of nightmares for Mariners fans because they haven't really added anything. They just traded away Kelnick. They traded away Eugenio Suarez. They haven't really spent any money, but Mitch Garver, he is absolutely a plus in that lineup. He is an addition. A 134 OPS plus with a two and a half war with the Rangers last year. He's not the best defensive catcher, so if you're thinking that he's going to be a full-blown catcher, nope. He is your brand new designated hitter, and every so often, he's going to be able to give Cal Raleigh a day off behind the dish because when Jonah Heim went down for the Rangers, that's kind of when they picked up. Not saying Jonah Heim stinks or anything like that, but Mitch Garver. He was a serviceable replacement. He can play catcher. He's just not very good at it. Martin Maldonado has found himself a brand new home and this is great news for me, a Guardians fan because he's now in the same division. Martin Maldonado, he is going to the White Sox. Now, I don't know what this means for Yasmani Grandal. Is he a free agent? I can't really remember, but Martin Maldonado, the machete, he's not very good offensively. He's a stud defensively and, I mean, just as a leader, he's pretty good at that as well. So the White Sox, they could use some of that leadership and maybe it's a great signing. I'm just excited to face him because he stinks. This is only going to take about 20 seconds, but from a new White Sox player to a former White Sox player, Luis Patino, if you guys don't remember, he was on the Padres and he was traded to the 
Tampa Bay Rays in that Blake Snell trade. Luis Patino, he went to the White Sox. He was terrible. And now he is back with the Padres. So there you go. A full circle moment. Now there's one more pickup from the San Diego Padres that we have to talk about. They just picked up the Japanese version of Josh Hader. And I really mean that because this dude, Yuki Matsui, my God, in 10 seasons, this guy has a 2.43 ERA and an insane 12 strikeouts per nine. Now the thing about UK is he's prone to walking a few guys. So that's the one thing. If you're a Padres fan, it might actually drive you insane. You might lose some years off your life trying to watch UK Matsui convert saves because he's going to put guys on base. He's almost going to be a Blake Snell-esque type of closing pitcher. But then again, Josh Hader, he wouldn't even allow himself to pitch in the eighth inning. So hopefully UK, he can go out and maybe get four or five out saves. I mean, he's straight up nasty. You guys are seeing the highlights. He's 28 years old, which I think is the exact amount of dollars. He's getting 28 million, something like that. But there you go. This confirms that Josh Hader, he is not going back to San Diego. So let's talk about this small trade between the Guardians and the Yankees. Now, again, it's small because the players, they were not good at all in 2023. We're talking about Estevan Florial of the Yankees. He is going to the Guardians in exchange for Cody Morris. But let me break this down because actually on paper, this could be great for both teams. So the Guardians are essentially getting a poor man's version of J-Rod. And I say it like that because when Estevan Florial is not in the big leagues, he plays like Julio freaking Rodriguez. Ask any Yankees fan, they can tell you that the ceiling of Esteban Florio is J-Rod. It's just, he is what's known as a 4A player. Now, I'm going to be careful when I just label guys as 4A player because the last guy that I labeled as a 4A player, someone that is too good for AAA but not good enough for the big leagues is Izak Paredes. And if you're a race fan, you have cooked me multiple times because Izak, he's been one of the best third basemen in baseball since I labeled him as pretty much a bust. Esteban Florio has only had 115 big league at-bats. That's why I want to be very careful when I call him a 4A player, but the stats aren't really lying at the moment. For his career in the big leagues, he has a 71 OPS plus. He has a 609 OPS, but if you're wondering why I'm calling him kind of a J-Rod-esque type of player, in AAA last year, in only 101 games, Estevan Florial, not only was he top 6% in sprint speed, he had 28 home runs with a crazy 380 on base percentage and a 945 OPS. Estevan Florial is one of the best AAA players we've ever seen. He gets called up by the Yankees. He hits 230 with a 635 OPS. He was not good at all, but defensively, he's a stud. He tries his best to get on base. He does try to take his walks, but that's kind of it. He's only taking walks at the big league level. We haven't seen any pop. And because the Guardians employ guys like Miles Straw, Will Brennan, who I still believe I like Will Brennan's potential, but they have guys on that roster that Estevan Florial can take at bats away from. Miles Straw, Ramon Laureano. I mean, Estevan, he's much better against righty, so maybe there's a platoon situation with Ramon Laureano or Miles Straw out there in center field. Regardless, I like his ceiling. He's extremely fast. He's a great defender. He's been J-Rod at the AAA level in terms of offensive prowess. I will take a flyer on a guy like this every single day. And Yankees fans are kind of saying, hey, he's not going to have any playing time because of who we have. Trent Grisham is a fourth outfielder. He's not going to play. We might as well take a guy on like Cody Morris. And I'm going to tell you guys this right now. Cody Morris, he was one of my favorite pitchers to watch in 2022. This dude had a 2.28 ERA in his first 23 innings as a big leaguer. And his changeup is one of the best changeups I've ever seen. He had a 50% K rate on the changeup when he first debuted. And the problem is he's coming back from injury. But the good news about that, he's finally healthy. He was throwing the hardest ever, even though he got lit up for a 6.7 ERA in 2023. His fastball looked lively. He had nine strikeouts in eight innings. I'm telling you guys, Cody Morris, the fact that he's going to be teaming up with Matt Blake, who is the pitching coach for the Yankees, I can genuinely say that even though this is a small time trade, a lot of people are not going to care about this. Both teams could really benefit from the situations that these players are in. Cody Morris, he's finally healthy. He's going to be teaming up with Matt Blake, Esteban Florial. He might finally be able to actually play consistent playing time, almost like what happened to Will Benson when he went to the Reds. He got better because he was playing almost every single day. Nolan Jones when he went to the Rockies. Maybe Esteban Florial with consistent playing time can break out. And Cody Morris, now that he's healthy, this is a cool trade. I love this. Now, let's stay with the Yankees real quick because we have an update on Isaiah Kainfalefa, IKF. 
he is no longer on the Yankees. If you're a Yankees fan, this is probably Christmas coming a little bit too late, but he is now on the Blue Jays. So not only is IKF never going to play a game for the Yankees, he's going to a division rival. He had a 78 OPS plus in 2023 and the year before that, I think it was, oh, no, so he had an 84 OPS plus in 2022, a 70 OPS plus in 2023. Yeah, he took the occasional walk and stole the occasional base, but I mean, essentially IKF, he was a utility guy. He was awful. He was just a a Tyler Wade-esque player. Now, one more Blue Jay. I do want to talk about Kevin Kiermaier. He was a former Blue Jay. Now he's a current Blue Jay. He just signed, I think it's a one-year contract with the Blue Jays. He broke out in 2023 with eight home runs and a 104 OPS plus. Yes, those are not the best numbers, but for a guy that is almost 34 years old, Kevin Kiermaier, who is one of the best defensive outfielders, I'd just say one of the best defenders in baseball history. Anytime you can get a all-time historic defender with an OPS plus above 100, who's also pretty quick on the bases. You'll take that every chance that you can get. So to me, I feel like Cody Bellinger is out of the running for the Blue Jays. And last but not least, a player that you probably don't care about, Josh Stamont. He is going to the Twins. I mean, back in the day, Josh Stamont, he was really good from 2020 to 2022. Josh had a combined 2.7 ERA and an almost 11 strikeouts per nine. His biggest issue is the walk, as you saw last year. He had a 5.9 walks per nine, and the year before that, a 6.9 walks per nine. So if the Twins can somehow get 2021 version of Josh Demont when he had a 3.7 walks per nine. I mean, this is a great pickup. So that is today's recap. We have an update on Wander Franco, the Guardians, and the Yankees, in my opinion, pull off a pretty win-win trade. And even if it doesn't work out, who really cares? They didn't lose a lot. And also, Mitch Garver, he's going to the Mariners. What do you guys make of that?